Hello everyone, Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at what you can find in your night skies during the month of August in 2022. So without any further ado, let's jump into our sky simulator software, Stellarium, and take a look at what we can find out there. Well, here we are, standing in front of the Cernan Earth and Space Center here on the campus of Triton College in River Grove, Illinois. We have our time set for 10 o'clock on the evening of August 15th, so right in the middle of the month, and this will be what we can see out there. We're facing towards the west right now, looking right at the building of the Cernan Earth and Space Center, and almost directly above it in the sky, almost directly towards the west, we see a very bright star named Arcturus, which is part of the constellation of Boötes the Herdsman. He's a shepherd up there in the sky. Bring up the artwork really quickly so we can see what he looks like. There he is. So he is a shepherd. He's the one who's in charge of moving those great bears around the sky, and we can see him standing right next to the Big Dipper and Ursa Major right here, moving those bears across the sky. So by finding Boötes, you should be able to find Ursa Major, the big bear, as well. Now, as we turn our way across the sky, turning more towards the south, higher up, we'll see a few stars due to the light pollution here in Chicagoland area. Makes it hard to see a lot of them, but we can find a good bunch. Towards the southwest, very close to the horizon, we see a bright orangish colored star called Antares, which is part of the constellation of Scorpius the Scorpion. It's a little bit blocked out by some of the trees and the buildings, but if you go out a little bit earlier than 10 o'clock, you should be able to spot it maybe a little bit higher up, a little bit easier to see. But here is Scorpius just starting to settle down below the horizon. All right next to Scorpius, we have this bright group of stars, several of them all close together. We call this the teapot, but it's part of a much larger shape. Here we can see the teapot shape, but it has a lot more to it. The entire shape is called Sagittarius the Archer. He's half man, half horse, a centaur. And a really cool thing about this shape is not so much the centaur, which is pretty cool, but that teapot part of it. Um, if I get rid of the artwork here, we can see it a little bit better. This teapot that we see here can be used to point this around and find some really cool things. So here we have the handle of the teapot. There's the lid, and there is the spout. And if we follow this spout as like an arrow with a line pointing from it, it'll point us right towards the exact center of the Milky Way galaxy. Now, the Milky Way is not something that we'll see here around Chicagoland. There is far too much light pollution. But you can know that you're looking right at it in the sky by using those stars in Sagittarius to point you towards its center, and then you just have to imagine that the rest of the Milky Way is like steam rising out of that teapot, and you'll have a good idea of where it goes. Now I can show you a little bit better by turning off the atmosphere here, and we'll see those bright stars do point us right towards the center of the Milky Way, and then the rest of it rises up like steam through the sky. Now, moving up higher up, almost directly overhead, we have a bright star here, and then a couple more pop into view as we look even higher. Now, these three bright stars make up our summer triangle, which we can see throughout the summer and into the early autumn. It's made up of three bright stars from three separate shapes. We'll start with the bottom star. It's called Altair, and it is part of the constellation of Aquila the Eagle. Now, moving up, we have a bright star called Deneb, which is part of the constellation of Cygnus the Swan. And then the brightest star in our summer triangle is a star called Vega, and it's part of the smallest shape in the summer triangle, which is Lyra the Harp. I'll bring up the artwork so you can see these here. We have the giant eagle, the giant swan, and the harp Lyra. Now, these are pretty recognizable and very easy to spot because of that triangle shape that we can see. And once you find that big triangle, then you can narrow it down to the three individual shapes. Cygnus the Swan here also has another name that you might know it as, and that is the Northern Cross. So if you connected the tail feathers with the head and the two stars in the middle of the wings, you have this nice bright group of stars that makes an almost perfect cross that we can see here in the Northern Hemisphere. So if you hear someone call it the Northern Cross and someone else calls it Cygnus the Swan, well, they're both actually correct. Now, these are some of the brightest stars that we'll see tonight, right around 10 o'clock. But rising up, there is something very interesting. It's coming up in the constellation of Capricornus, which is a bit difficult to spot. The stars aren't very bright, but what is very bright is the planet Saturn. So you'll start to be able to see Saturn around 10 o'clock in the August skies. 
And if you wait a little while longer, stay up a little bit later, you'll see some more things. Let me turn on all of the planet labels here. And then we're going to go forward in time. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So we see Saturn around 10 o'clock. And then Jupiter starts to rise up around 11, followed shortly by the moon. And then a little bit hot later on, we'll see Mars starting to rise up around 2 o'clock. If we go forward to about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, well, then we'll see Mars, the moon, Jupiter, and Saturn all stretching across the sky throughout the evening. Now, this is what it looks like at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I know that I do not want to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning to be able to see all of the planets and the moon in a nice little row, but that's okay because you don't have to. You can wait a little while longer. If you come out at night, say around 10 o'clock at night, in about another two months or so, then you will see all of them nice and easily visible just after sunset instead of right before the sun rise. Well, thank you everyone for taking a look at the sky with me today. Remember that you can come learn about the sky with us in person at the CERN Earth and Space Center on the campus of Triton College in River Grove, Illinois, just outside the city of Chicago. We'd love to see you here for one of our public shows, and you can find more information about those on our website. But the most important thing is for you to remember to get out there and take a look at your own night skies. <laughs>